Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an exponential equation with an imaginary number. Imagine we have negative i on the right hand side. Now we're going to solve for z, obviously what else can we solve for? So if you're new to complex numbers go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I also have another channel where I do number theory, algebra and trigonometry videos and it's called cyber math cyber with an s okay and if you have any questions about complex numbers for this video or any other problem let us know in the comment section down below i'm pretty sure somebody will be more than happy to answer including myself so we have this interesting exponential equation e to the power z equals negative i so for which values of z is this true we're going to look at that first of all complex world is very different from the real world because you may get infinitely many solutions most of the time. And functions are multi-valued, the complex logarithm is multi-valued, so on and so forth. So there's a lot of things that are interesting in the complex world. So we'll briefly talk about those. We'll talk about Euler's formula, we'll talk about polar form, we'll talk about so many cool things about complex numbers. So, first of all, I'm pretty sure that some people are thinking, why don't you just ln both sides. What's ln? ln is the natural log. So as soon as you log both sides, right, ln e to the z is going to turn into z because ln e is 1. So this will be z equals ln negative i. Case closed, right? No, not really. Because the problem is, what is the natural log of a complex number? What's the natural log of an imaginary number? So those are things that we need to talk about. So if you have a complex number like a plus bi, how do you log it, right? I mean, if you have a number like e, ln e is 1, ln e squared is 2, so on and so forth. I mean, it's easy to log any number, but how do you do that with a complex number? So we kind of need to think about the polar form, since a complex number can be written as r times e to the i theta, where theta is the argument and r is the modulus. This can basically be written as ln r, plus i theta. Again, r is the modulus or the absolute value and theta is the argument. I'll give you some brief formulas for these. Uh, if this is uh, our complex number, r would be square root of a squared plus b squared. In other words, that's going to be the norm. And theta is not directly given, but tangent theta is equal to b over i, b over a I mean, if uh, your number is a plus b i. So, Sometimes we can say that, okay, theta is equal to 10 inverse or arctangent b over a. Make sense? Uh, the reason why I can't say that all the time is because if you think about the unit circle, there are two values for which tangent is positive or both uh, negative. For example, think about pi over 4, right? So tangent pi over 4 is 1. And also if you add pi to it, which is tangent 5 pi over 4, that's also one. But when we do the arctangent one, we have to come up with a single value so that it becomes a function, a well-defined function. Which one are we gonna pick? We pick pi over four. Why? Because we want our value to be between zero and I think negative pi over two and pi over two. Make sense? So for a positive value, we're gonna pick the first quadrant, not the third. We're basically going to be in the first and fourth quadrant for arctangent, for arc sine the same, for arc cosine we're going to use the first two quadrants because it has to change from positive to negative. Makes sense? So we don't hit the same values two times. So we got to be very careful about this invertibility of a function or well-defined functions because you can't have two different outputs for a single input. Does that make sense? Okay. You can have the opposite, which means your function is not bijective, which obviously tangent is not bijective because we're getting the same output for different inputs. Make sense? But when you revert that or invert it, that's not good. So we got to be very specific. All right, cool. So hopefully that gave you some idea. But for, you know, to make things a little easier, you can assume that this is the case. But guess what? With negative i, you can always 
uh, be sure about it because negative i, if you plot it on the complex plane, it's going to be right here. So its angle is given by negative pi over 2. So you're not going to go wrong if you pick negative pi over 2. Does that make sense? All right. So what are we going to do? We can evaluate uh, ln of negative i and just go to the solution that way. Let's go ahead and take a look. So since negative i can be written as 1 times e to the power i times negative pi over 2, I'm going to put the negative sign here and write it like this. And when I natural log it, ln 1 is going to be 0, and then plus or minus, I'm going to have i times pi over 2. So that should be the ln of negative i, or just, uh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say, I don't know why I said z is ln. Yes, I was trying to solve for z, so never mind, this is z. And since that's 1, <coughs> excuse me, and since that's 0, then z would become negative i pi over 2. Make sense? Is that the only solution? That's a good question. We'll talk about that. I just gave you the principal value because I did not add anything to this angle, but we are allowed to add, right? Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at another perspective to this problem. That's probably a better idea, in my opinion. Let's call this second method. e to the z equals negative i. Why don't we just directly write negative i in the polar form so that we can compare these two exponentials. How do you write negative i? Again, negative i is here. That makes an angle of negative pi over 2. Its modulus is 1. So we can write it as 1 times e to the power negative i pi over 2. So its argument, principal argument, is negative pi over 2. But of course, you are allowed to add multiples of 2 pi. So why not do this in a more general case here? Let's just add 2 pi n. And then we can leave the i outside, or the negative i. And now, from here, we get z equals negative i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. What does that mean? It means if n is 0, z is going to be negative i pi over 2, which is what we found before. If n is equal to 1, then z is going to be negative i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi, which is 5 pi over 2. So z is going to be negative 5 i pi over 2. And of course, uh, these solutions are going to be 2 i 2 pi apart. That's what the period is for this function. Okay, And there's going to be infinitely many values that I, uh, as I already mentioned. But, you know, you can just stick to the principal value and say, okay, this is the solution. Let's go ahead and check out Wolfram Alpha. Let's see what it offers. Uh-oh, that looks very different, doesn't it? Not really. If you go ahead and distribute, you're going to get 2 pi ni and then minus i pi over 2, which is basically the same thing as saying negative i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. Same thing written differently. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.